say hey everybody. He's in his like yelling phase. He's been like, yeah, all day. And now you're like, I don't know about this, mom. You see yourself? That's the most handsome boy I've ever seen. That's the most handsome boy I've ever seen. Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to be going into my breastfeeding journey. It's definitely gonna be more of a vulnerable video, sharing things I've learned, tips, obstacles, struggles, all of that. I hope that this video can help some new moms out there or moms that are breastfeeding for the first time or if you're pregnant and you're wanting to, there's not a whole lot of support and information out there when it comes to breastfeeding and the last five months I've been exclusively breastfeeding and it's been one of the best parts of having a baby. Not easy, it's challenging, but I love it so much and I'm so passionate about talking about it with my friends and sharing things on my Instagram. It's tough, but it's so worth it. I was in a fall mood today, so I tried to do a little bit of a fall makeup look, even though it's almost 80 degrees still here in Nashville, but that's okay because I love fall makeup, so I went ahead and did a little fall mom glam. On my lips, of course, I'm wearing Elevate Beauty, my beauty brand, called the Boldness Matte with Redeemed, our brand new cream gloss on top. You can wear them both individually, but I mean, I love brown lips for winter, for fall, holiday time. I was feeling it. Like I revolved this entire look around the lip color. So I want to start this video with my journey from the beginning and things that I learned along the way and kind of take you from where I started versus now. Like most first time moms, I had no idea what I was doing. I just knew I wanted to breastfeed. Breastfeeding was my biggest postpartum goal. Like I wanted that to be successful more than anything else. I did not buy formula. I did not have a plan B. I said, this is gonna work. We're gonna figure it out together. And what my friend told me, I always think about it. I always say it is breastfeeding is like a dance. You are learning it together. There's no, I got it and I'm good. There's obstacles, there's challenges and that's okay. You are going through a transition, your baby is learning, you guys are learning together. And since there is such a lack of support, in my opinion, for breastfeeding, you know, women are so often pushed to just use formula, just use formula, just use formula, or supplement with formula, top off your baby. At least in America, I have noticed this trend of breastfeeding doesn't matter, just do whatever you can. And I think it sets a lot of women up for failure because they don't have that support system and they don't know what they're doing, right? I've noticed this lack of emphasis on how important and special and amazing breastfeeding is. And I also know so many moms that wanted to breastfeed who couldn't because they weren't given the tools and the support and the encouragement, the nutrition, the village, whatever that mama needed to be able to breastfeed because biologically, naturally, we should all be able to breastfeed our babies, but that's not the reality that we live in. And it breaks my heart because, I mean, I see it in my DMs every time I talk about it of moms who could only do it for a little bit or were never able to due to, you know, medical interventions or lack of support or not knowing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it makes me sad being on this journey for five months because it's so beautiful, it's so special. And our bodies are so uniquely, wonderfully created by God. My first tip would be after birth. No matter what kind of birth you have, if you can, allow your baby to nurse within the first hour. This is called golden hour. It's so beautiful and it'll help with your milk. The first latch for me wasn't easy, but my doula was there and she was helping me. We actually used one of those silicone nipple shields for the first latch and it helped him to latch. And then when he wanted to nurse like an hour or so later, I was like, we're gonna have to figure this out together. And I literally just sat there and we figured it out and eventually we got it going. Um, if you've ever seen the baby breast crawl, a newborn can actually crawl up mama's belly to the breast. It's beautiful, look it up, you should watch it, it's awesome. For me, one of the most stressful things was waiting for my milk to come in, and I think that's for a lot of moms. My breasts were getting engorged, they were filling, they were rock hard, I had a little bit of um, warmness, some people experience when their milk's coming in, so I knew it was coming, it's just the waiting for it. If you didn't already know, your body makes colostrum when you're pregnant. 
and colostrum is very thick. You can try to express some in your last trimester. I kind of tried a few times, didn't really have success, so I said, that's fine, my body will figure it out when baby is here. Colostrum is the golden milk. It's very thick. It's not like your mature milk when it comes in. This is what your baby will be drinking until your milk comes in or your mature milk, which is, you know, the milk you're gonna be nursing your baby when it comes in. A lot of women don't know that. So my milk took, I think, five days to come in. And as a first time mom, it can be a little stressful because I'm like, are you eating enough? Are you hungry? And you know, in those first few days, your baby is going through a huge transition. They were in your womb, not having to ask for food, not wearing diapers, being cozy and warm and feeling safe, to now being overstimulated having to try to communicate when he or she is hungry. It's a huge transition for them as well as you as a mom and your husband. It's a huge transition. The first few days were really easy for me as far as breastfeeding. He was nursing around the clock, which is fine. I think a lot of women and apparently a lot of nurses tell moms from my DMs I've seen that oh, your baby's still hungry, your milk isn't enough. I think one of the biggest myths out there is that your milk isn't enough, especially in the first couple days, the first couple of weeks, because your baby is building your supply and your baby's stomach is so tiny. I'll try to put a chart up here that my doula had sent me. Your baby's stomach is so small. It's like the size of a cherry. They don't need a whole lot to fill up but it absorbs fast, so they're nursing often. Something I learned early on was to stay away from Google for the most part or any kind of search engine. A lot of mainstream makes you doubt your body and can make you afraid really fast. There are several ways to track if your baby is eating enough. You should know if your baby is dehydrated. You can look up the signs of that. One way is to track their diapers, but I would do that very loosely. As long as they're having enough pee diapers they're being hydrated. That's what I've read, that's what I've been told, that's what we experienced. Babies aren't a one size fits all. Just because you know you read that they're supposed to have this many poop diapers a day doesn't mean that your baby will. Every baby is different. Usually with breastfed babies, most of the nutrients are being absorbed, so there's not a whole lot of waste always coming out. So you might see a fluctuation in you know poop diapers, but there should always be pee diapers. A mother's intuition never lies. When you tune into that and you're breastfeeding and you're nursing, you're becoming so attuned to your baby. You guys are learning together. You will know if something is wrong. I want to encourage you, if you are on your breastfeeding journey or going to go through it, to trust your body and don't think every time that your baby is fussy that they're hungry. I think every mom goes through that. I'm like, are you eating enough? Are you eating enough? I've gone through it many times. It's totally normal. And I remember a couple days after Adriel was born, I was like, I think he's hungry. I think he's hungry. And I was like expressing colostrum after feeding him. And if you've ever tried to express it, it, it's not like milk. It's thick, it takes a while. I mean, I sat there for like 20 minutes and I didn't use a pump, I was hand expressing. And I remember I only got like a teaspoon, which is a lot, but you know, I'm a first time mom. It felt like, is that enough? And then my milk came in a few days later and I felt like <laughs> I could breathe. But now being on this journey, I feel so much more confident if I get to have another child one day. But I want to encourage you to trust that your body is doing what it's supposed to and don't automatically assume that your baby's hungry or that your milk supply is not enough. I've seen this and talked to so many women and it, it's so common, which makes me sad. Once your milk supply comes in, it can take up to six weeks for that supply to regulate. So for the first at least month, what I personally would recommend, what I did was made sure that my baby was eating every two hours during the day and every three to four hours at night. I would set an alarm at night, but Adriel woke up like a clock. I never even had to have the alarm go off because he was just always waking up right before my alarm would go off. This is going to help your milk supply to regulate. There's also a thing called cluster feeding that not a lot of people talk about where your baby is nursing more frequently. Keep in mind that that two hour during the day, three to four hours at night, that starts from when you start nursing. So if you're nursing your baby and it's one o'clock in the afternoon, let's say your baby nurses until two. That means at three, because that's two hours from one, you need your baby to nurse again or to offer to nurse again. 
the first week was definitely intense for me. I pretty much spent the whole week on the couch, nursing, napping, nursing, napping, nursing, napping. It, it was a whole blur. And I honestly feel like for a good four weeks, most of my time was spent on the couch and then towards the end baby wearing and just pretty much nursing. But that is going to build your supply. When Adriel was born, especially the first week or two, he was nursing for long periods of time. He might nurse on the breasts for 45 minutes to an hour. And that's completely normal. As your baby gets older, the time that they will nurse will become less and less because your baby becomes more effective at drawing out the milk. Now, unless they're soothing themselves or putting themselves to sleep, that's different. And every baby is different, but now at five months, Adriel can be done with one side in five minutes and move on to the other side and maybe only do a couple minutes where he used to nurse forever. Like I remember each side would be at least 15 to 20 minutes and now he can be done in like three to five minutes. He's just so fast because they get really effective at drawing out the milk and as they change. And I remember reading that and thinking, wow, that'll be interesting. And now it's just, it's pretty quick. It's a lot faster. Um, they grow really fast. The things I think women want to know about the most is how do I build my supply? What do I do? What do I do? Let your baby nurse because the more your baby nurses, the more milk you're going to make. It's really amazing how our bodies were created not just to nourish and feed our baby, but to soothe them. Another thing when it comes to nursing, especially in the beginning, is your baby might be soothing himself instead of feeding. I have had messages from women saying that, oh, you know, the doctor told me if my baby isn't nursing to take him off. And I'm like, what? No, you are the original pacifier. Like they made pacifiers after us. That's why it says, looks like a nipple because your baby soothes himself on the breast. I know it's not possible for everyone depending if you're going back to work or your lifestyle, but I want to encourage you if your baby is soothing themselves a lot on the breast, let them. That will also encourage and build your supply. So you will be able to hear if they're just suckling, you know, like a passy or if they're actually drawing the milk. I personally wouldn't be too worried about a freezer supply unless you have to go back to work soon, then that's a whole nother story. But if you have time to be able to be at home, let your baby build that supply. Um, I personally didn't want to pump until my milk supply was regulated. So I waited closer to that six week mark and I don't really pump at all. I have a very small freezer stash, but I don't also really do bottles. I'll get into that in a little bit, but it's very important to let your baby nurse on demand if you can, especially in that first month. Get comfy on the couch, find something to watch, read a book, sleep, rest. They always say to nap when the baby's napping, which is funny because I thought I would, but it was hard for me to do that during the day. My mind was just kind of going and it was a whole process. In addition to nursing, the two other things I would say help keep your supply would be sleep, which is really hard in the newborn stage, but try to sleep. Nursing naps will become your best friend. Sideline nursing will become your best friend. It's incredible. So sleep and nourishment. Your body takes 500 to 700 calories, give or take, just to make milk a day. I mean, it's incredible. It takes a lot to breastfeed. And the good news is, is that food tastes even better postpartum than pregnancy, at least I think so. I mean, breastfeeding food just hits on a whole nother level, especially a good cheeseburger and some coconut water. That's like one of my favorites, but you need to make sure you're eating. You need to make sure you're getting electrolytes, you're getting fruits, you're getting protein, you're getting a lot of water. Coconut water is something I drink every single day. Make sure you are being nourished. Breastfeeding burns a lot of calories. Don't worry about postpartum body. Don't worry about that. Your priority is to nourish and feed your baby. Also be very careful of who gives you advice because a lot of people want to give advice and it's not always the right advice. And a lot of times moms are pushed to just top off with formula. And if you are topping off or supplementing with formula, that's going to expand your baby's stomach more than breast milk. So I've seen a lot of moms struggle with their supply once they do that, because when your baby is getting your milk and then also formula, because, you know, let's say you think they're not eating enough, 
their stomach's going to expand and you're going to have to make more milk to fill that expanding stomach. And if your body can't do that, your milk supply might stay the same or you might find yourself using more formula because their stomach keeps getting bigger and your body's not making more milk because they're not nursing, they're taking a formula bottle. These are all things to take into consideration because your body is going to respond to how much your baby is nursing. Your body doesn't know, oh, you know, the baby just had some formula. Let me make some more milk. It doesn't work that way. So keep that in mind. This is one reason why I waited to pump until my milk was regulated because I didn't want to risk mastitis or clogged ducts. Unless you have to go back early for maternity leave and you're trying to build your stash, I would try to wait as long as possible to pump. I only did a few times to have a little bit of a stash in case I had to go somewhere, just so there was a little bit of milk in the freezer, just in case. When it comes to pumping, if you are nursing and pumping, your body is going to respond to that demand. So essentially, your body might think, okay, we have twins because you're nursing your baby what they need and you're pumping additionally, depending on how much that you're pumping. And if you stop pumping that amount and nursing that amount, you can risk engorgement and mastitis, inflammation, clogged ducts, which is inflammation of the ducts, and it's very painful. I got mastitis once, and I think it was because of a latch issue. Putting your body into overdrive because you want to build a stash or you need it for maternity leave, the moment you stop doing that amount, it can lead to engorgement, it can lead to clogged ducts, and mastitis doesn't mean it will, but it can because in that first about six weeks, your body is learning how much milk and what your baby needs, and then your supply will regulate more. I've also seen moms be able to increase their supply once they've had you know, issues or weren't nursing as much. It's very possible to you know, change your supply after that six weeks, but that first period is really, really important. So I would recommend only to pump if you have to, or if you're doing you know, exclusively pumping, that's a different story. I'm only speaking from an exclusively nursing standpoint of I just let my baby nurse on demand. A huge misconception with your supply is pumping, seeing how much you're pumping and thinking, oh, I'm not getting enough. My baby is hungry. I need to supplement. A pump, no matter if you have the correct flange size or not, is not going to get as much milk as your baby can. Nothing will get all the milk out like your baby can. Also, every baby is different. Every baby drinks a different amount. If you ask me how much my baby drinks each time he nurses, I have no idea. All I know is that he's five months and he's almost 20 pounds and he's always well fed and he gets exactly what he needs. Personally, I think being concerned with ounces and percentiles and all these things just add to postpartum anxiety that is unnecessary. Like you will know when your baby is full. You will get to know your baby's cues when they're hungry. It just takes time. You guys will learn together. The first couple times you pump when you do, you might not get a lot. Your supply is going to change based on the time of day. You're gonna have the most milk at night and in the early hours of the morning. Also, when did you pump? You know, did you nurse and pump right after? Did you nurse and then an hour later you pumped? Maybe your supply was still kind of building. An important thing to know is that your milk never runs out. Your breasts will fill with milk and your baby drains it. And then once your baby drains the milk, your milk is then making on demand. So sometimes babies will fuss because they want that, that fast flow and your body's making it as they drink. Whenever that would happen to me, because that happened to me often, but I also think it was something else I'm going to talk about. If he was done on one side, I would switch. And then if he's still getting fussy, I would kind of switch back and forth because your body's still making milk. But one thing that I realized is there are times where my baby would just be done, but he still kind of wanted to comfort himself when my body was making milk. Babies can keep nursing and then their bellies are full. And they're, you know, a little frustrated because their bellies are full, but they want to keep nursing. So I realized that was happening and I was like, oh, he wasn't still hungry. And I kept switching him back and forth. He was full. He just really needed to be you know, taken off because he kept coming off the breast and getting frustrated. He was already full. So also keep that in mind. I know this because when I talked to other moms and two, there were times I thought he was still hungry. So I'd give him a breast milk bottle that I had pumped and he would drink it because it tastes good. 
but then he would spit it all up. He was already full. Um, sometimes your baby might have gas or need to burp. Uh, unpopular opinion, but I know a lot of other breast moms do this. I don't burp him at all. I did a little bit if I thought he needed it the first month, but now once he's done or when I switch sides, I'll hold him up for a second and he burps when he has to burp. If he has gas, you know, <laughs> he'll let it out and he lets me know. I'm, I'm more attuned to him now, but he's always just kind of burped on his own. Even sideline nursing, he'll kind of like stop and burp or burp while he's eating. It's so funny. But as their system grows as well, uh, their body grows, they'll learn to kind of get that out easier. We struggled with gas for like the first two months or so, and it was really hard at times. Uh, one thing I cut out of my diet was oats because I realized that I think oats was something that was giving him gas. So I stopped eating. I had these like lact lactation cookies, which were just good that my mom made but they had oats. And once I stopped eating those, the gas pretty much went away. We also did a chiropractor, which helped a lot as well. So I wanna talk about latch and breastfeeding positions. This is something you're going to have to experiment with your baby to see what works for you guys. Um, for me, the first five weeks or so, I exclusively nursed laid back, which I think is one of the easiest positions, especially with a newborn. It's easy on your back. It's just all around the most comfortable, one of the most comfortable. And essentially you're laying back reclined a little bit. You hold your baby. When they're small, you can kind of put them across your body or up and down. You don't have to hunch over and it helps them to get a good latch. I will say I don't think a shallow or deep latch is always the cause of trauma. I think that positioning and where their chin is located on the breast is a bigger part of trauma, at least in my experience. I had tried cradle and cross cradle and nursing in my rocking chair. And I had noticed that when I started going from just laid back nursing to also, you know, kind of leaning over, I was starting to get a little bit of irritation and trauma and it wouldn't hurt during nursing, but I would have some pain sometimes between nursing. Uh, and that was not fun. I got to the point where I realized it was holding him and nursing him in cradle or cross cradle. And I personally don't like that position because they're pulling your breasts down and it's just uncomfortable, I think, all around. It wasn't for us. The other position that we really like is side line nursing. This is where you can lay down on the bed or a couch, wherever you have space, we do on our bed. And this is also how we sleep at night. And it's where you're laying on your side and your baby is laying on his or her side and nursing. The other thing I take advantage of before I forget is nursing in his carrier. Whenever he's in his baby carrier and I've got to put him for a nap, sometimes I can just loosen the straps a little bit and nurse him in there and he'll fall right asleep and then I tighten the straps. There's nothing wrong with nursing your baby to sleep. Our bodies were literally created to soothe our babies to sleep with the breast and with our milk. You know, it bugs me so much that mainstream and the whole parenting industry will say, oh, don't nurse your baby to sleep, you're creating a bad habit, but they'll sell you products that are hundreds of dollars that will literally pacify your baby to sleep. And one thing to realize, if you haven't already, is that most of these things are made to replace the mom. And that's just a fact. When I realized that most of these products were meant to replace the mom and the bond with the mom, it changed my perspective on a lot of things. And I'm not saying not to use those products because there's times that you've got to shower, you've got to brush your teeth, you've got to use the bathroom, you've got to eat, and you might not have an extra set of hands to help you with the baby. And you can set them in a crib that rocks or a swing or give them a passy. There's nothing wrong with that. You have to do what's best for you and your baby. But what I'm saying is, is don't listen to this industry telling you not to pacify and soothe your baby to sleep so they can sell you something to do it for you. You should do what your instinct tells you. Our Holy Spirit discernment, that mom intuition is so strong, like your body knows what to do. And I have taken full advantage of nursing my baby to sleep at night for naps. You know, when I'm exhausted in the middle of the day and I feel like, okay, I need a nap so badly, my baby doesn't sleep by himself, which is also perfectly normal. I will sideline nurse in bed and I will get him to go to sleep nursing with me and we will both pick, take a nap. That helped me so much, especially after the first month 
like month one to three, I think is a huge transition as your baby grows and you know, you're doing this day in and day out and you're probably really tired. At least I feel like moms are always tired. I'm always tired. If your baby is having trouble latching, there could be some kind of oral ties, which you can then opt to have released if it's something that you want to do. I think oral ties are very common, but I don't think they're the only reason why your baby can have issues latching. I've known people who had oral ties released and they still, you know, didn't have a successful breastfeeding journey or still had problems in their breastfeeding journey. In my experience, one of the most important parts of breastfeeding is not giving up and being consistent even when it's really difficult. Trust me, there were times when my baby was fussing at the breast and he's crying and then I'm crying and it's hard. It's It can be very hard emotionally. It can be very hard physically. Um, I had mastitis once. I'm actually currently dealing with a little bit of a latch issue now at five months, which I'm like, you know, why is it all of a sudden painful now? Um, not to go into it too much because I'm just kind of starting this part of my breastfeeding journey, but Adriel's latch, his lip sometimes goes inwards because his tongue is not extending all the way. I don't know if any other moms have gone through this, but if you have, feel free to share your experience in the comments if you feel comfortable. But we are going to see a feeding therapist to help with his latch because his tongue is not extending all the way. So his upper lip compensates sometimes by going in, even if I kind of flip it out. And that's caused me a little bit of pain sometimes, which is what I think led to me getting mastitis and a little bit of that inflammation because I've kind of been able to get ahead of it now after the first time that I got it. And I asked my lactation consultant because I got one for the first time uh, a few weeks ago. And I was like, why is all of a sudden it's causing me pain now? And she said, well, you know, as your baby grows and their mouth changes, things change. So what used to work for him a month ago might not be working for him now. So it is a journey and I am committed to make it work. I want to personally breastfeed as long as possible. But now I'm like, okay, now we have to figure out how we can fix it so that I'm not in pain every time because he's eating great. He's drawing the milk great. There's no problem on his end. I just want to make sure I don't keep getting inflammation or, you know, clogged ducts or mastitis because it's painful and it can lead to more serious issues. So one thing that has helped us a lot is laid back nursing, going back to the beginning where we started going back to laid back nursing and I notice his lip coming out more. I'll go ahead and break the myth of will my baby <laughs> prefer bottles over nursing. In my experience and thousands of DMs I got when I asked this question on Instagram, the answer is no, a baby will always prefer the breast. Uh, we try to pace feed when we have done bottles, but he always prefers the breast. And I usually can't give him the bottle because he'll just want to nurse. He will literally push it away and make this disgusted face. And it's so cute because the first time he did a bottle, I felt like he was cheating on me. And I was like, I don't like this. I want to, you know, always be able to nurse, but we have it in case <laughs> we need it. But it's the cutest thing. They prefer their mom. I want to share a couple cool facts about breast milk because it's just so amazing. Uh, one drop of breast milk includes something around a million white blood cells. As your baby's saliva hits your body, your brain then tells your milk exactly what it needs. Your body creates a custom milk formula for your baby. If it needs more of a certain vitamin or whatever it needs, antibodies, your body makes that. Also, make sure you're kissing that baby all day. As mama kisses baby your mouth picks up pathogens on your baby's skin, any potential pathogens, and then it also tells your milk what to make the next time that you nurse. Even if you're exclusively pumping, you kissing your baby is going to make exactly what your baby needs in your milk. It's really incredible. Another cool fact is as your baby grows, your milk becomes more calorie dense. This is something to keep in mind if you're freezing breast milk because if your baby is, let's say, five months old and you're using milk that you pumped a few months ago, they might wanna drink more because it's less calorie dense. Whereas if you give them milk that you pumped that day, they might not drink as much because your milk has changed. Something else that's really cool is your milk is different based on if you have a boy or a girl. 
I'm going to try to link this post if I remember, but for boys, breast milk tends to have a higher fat or protein content, and moms may produce slightly less milk compared to if you have a girl. For girls, the breast milk contains more calcium and may produce more milk compared to sons. Like, God made our bodies so incredible. I want to end this video by encouraging you if you're on your breastfeeding journey or if you are wanting to breastfeed to keep going and not to give up. I know it's hard, um, especially when you're dealing with obstacles that are causing you pain and that are difficult. It is a huge sacrifice. Like, you know, when you breastfeed, your body isn't even really yours. Like I nourish my body so that I can produce milk to take care of my son because he is my priority. You know, I don't really care about postpartum weight loss or any of that right now. The bond that comes out from that and seeing your baby grow and knowing your body has nourished your baby is just incredible. And it outweighs every struggle I've been through, even when I got mastitis, which was more intense and harder than labor, I feel like for me, it still does not compare to the joy I feel from breastfeeding. And if you are on that journey, surround yourself with moms who can encourage you and people that lift you up because there are challenges. It isn't easy, but it's so wonderful and it's so beautiful and it's so worth it. Say, I love the milkies. Great service. I'll definitely be back for more. Say, we love the milkies. Mm. Hmm? <laughs> Look at those thighs. Look at those thighs.